I just wanted to do a quick video to show you guys what I've been been working on here. Um, cycle 25 is improving and 17 meters is coming into better better shape. And I, I wanted to have some additional equipment for for 17 meters. So I may eventually build a, a dual 17 meter, 12 meter transceiver, sort of in the same configuration as the Mythbuster, which is on... Uh, 75 and 20 but uh, for now I just started fooling around with some of the old gear that I have laying around the shack seeing what I could put together I, w I first was taking a look at my first SSB uh, transmitter and uh, I'm, I've been working on that I, I think I did a, a blog post about uh, the, the crystal filter in there which was taken out of the Swan 240 but lately I've been working on a receiver for 17 and what I did is I took an old receiver that I have, which is a bare bones super head. It's on this board from Far Circuits. I got this uh, several years ago, many years ago. I had been talking about another bare bones super head that I built. And uh, a guy came back and said, hey, look, I want one. And I'll send it to you. And he sent it to me. And I discovered that it was from Dale Parfit, W4OP, a really uh, excellent uh, home brewer. And so I was proud to have his equipment in in the shack. He built this bare bone superhead here. He changed it a bit. He had five. He has a, a five megahertz crystal filter, three crystals in there. And I changed it further and expand and and broadened it a bit by changing the caps in here and made it broad enough for for SSB. Um, now I've had this receiver on various bands over the years. I think it started out on twenty. For a while, it was on 17 with a, with a crystal VXO. I had two crystals that would go into the VX via the, the the variable oscillator box here. Two crystals at 23 megahertz, which would put me on the 17 meter band. Then I had it on 40 for a while, and uh, now I've decided to put it back on on 17. But I did it in a different way, and I think you guys will will like this. Um, I I didn't want to go back to the crystal, the variable crystal oscillator here, only because those crystals are now in use. Those same 23 megahertz crystals are in use in my VXO uh, BIDX 17, the uh, my first BIDX transceiver. And I don't want to pull them out because I use that quite a bit. So I started thinking about a different way to get this receiver on 17 meters. And it occurred to me that all I needed to do first, well, what I needed to do since it was on 40, I could just build a down converter, and that's what you have over here in this kind of Altoids box over here. I could just build a down converter to take 17 meters and down convert to 7 megahertz, and then it goes here, and boom, Bob's your uncle. You're on uh, on 17 meters. And I did that first. I think I had a... Uh, I, I used one of these little crystal modules here, and I found a crystal module that would put me right at the bottom of the 40 meter band coming in here, and then I would, would be able to listen to it. But, you know, that didn't didn't really work out at all. And, be, be, well, it worked, but as you could imagine, I was also picking up uh, 40 meter uh, CW signals at the low portion of the band. So then I decided, well, what I'll do is I'll change the uh, the crystal module here and try to find a crystal module that will put me somewhere close to 40 meters, but outside the ham band, so I won't be getting that much interference. And I found that I had a crystal module at 25 megahertz. This is a 25 megahertz crystal oscillator. And the 25 megahertz crystal oscillator means that 18110, which is the bottom of the 17 meter phone band, comes out at 6.89 megahertz. And 18165, which is the top, really, of the of the 17 meter phone band for practical purposes on SSB, comes out at 6.835 megahertz. I took a look at this portion of the spectrum using the NA5B uh, web SDR, and it's pretty quiet. There's not much happening there. There is one transmitter from Taiwan that comes on every once in a while, but it doesn't seem to be pretty doesn't seem to be particularly strong, and it didn't didn't bother me to the extent that 40 meter CW was bothering me. So I made the switch and I put this 25 megahertz 
um, crystal unit in there. Ran it to the 406, ran it to the, to the ME. Let's see here, let's see if we're still going. There we are. All right, ran it to the uh, NE602 mixer. And then I had to move the VFO. The VFO, I figured I needed to have it run from, um, uh, let's see, from, yeah, I needed to have it to run from 18.135 to 18, uh, 1.835 megahertz to 1.89 megahertz. And that was easy. I just fooled around a little bit. I had some switchable caps over here that would uh, switch the, the range of the VFO. And these caps down here, this mess of capacitors down there was just to change the range. I needed about um, 55 kilohertz to cover uh, the the 17 meter phone band. So anyway, it's come together pretty well. I used this uh, this big coil here, it's air core coil on a coat hanger <laughs> tube. And I put in a little LM386 audio amplifier here. I had to change the audio amplifier because the the uh, like the 741 op amp that they had in the original, uh, Doug DeMaw in his article warned that it would distort if you tried to come up to speaker level audio output. And, and it did, it sounded awful. So I just replaced it. It's still sitting in there, but actually the audio from the, um, from the pot, from the audio gain control, goes into the LM386, and that's what I listen to. And it sounds really good. So I'm getting ready to go. The next step will be to work on the, uh, the transmitter and get that, uh, that crystal filter in better shape. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll keep you guys posted. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.